if you're not around people that are in the trenches with you that are around that problem, attacking it from different ways and finding out different solutions. I mean, how else, what, what, like you're going to surround, you're going to be trapped in your own echo chamber. So that was the biggest thing for me. Cause I've been kind of out of that. I, I met with Larry um, the other day and we caught up cause we haven't seen each other in a while. I think that was the biggest thing I had said, you know, we've been out of the, just the live event. I mean, everyone has relatively, but you know, more mm -hmm. so like I've been out unplugged from certain communities and out of the live event, um, just arena for a while. So those are things that you forget. And oftentimes like it's because you, you forget how valuable it was. Right. And, and yes, like, even though if I map to you how normal live events go, you're going to tell me here's the structure. Right. And mm. you sit, you and I sit there like, oh, I've seen this play before. I've seen this movie. Right. I know how things are going to go. There's going to be a case study here. There's going to be a blah, blah, blah there. And then they're going to pitch me on this day. They're going to pitch me again and then hide your credit card because you know it's coming. Right. Even with that same type of process. Right. The fundamentals are there. Right. The execution of that and the true value that was there was what I really appreciated. Right. I'm like, hey, another pitch is coming. I even told the guy, right, in the, uh, from the first event, I said, brother, like, if you didn't pitch, I'd be upset. Mainly because, I mean, I knew it was coming, but I also see the value that you're bringing. So it's almost as if, like, it's not almost as if, it truly is. You would be doing a disservice to this community if you didn't provide more value. And with more value comes the cost of time, money, whatever the heck you want to call it. Right. But, bro, I sat there. I looked at this guy. He barely spoke any English. Um, just a year ago, maybe a little over a year ago, just and then basically this from his story on stage, he was in an entirely different business. He was working for a restaurant. Fast forward to when he was speaking, he had a hundred clients, hundred agency clients. And I was like, mm. okay, so limiting belief kind of shattered. Let me, you know, I'm like, let me kind of figure that one out, right? Mm. What were these things? One of the themes was unattached income, something that you and I have been talking about in the context of customers versus clients. Right. That type of uh, business and setting up that way. So those are some things that really stood out to me to say, oh, there are other solutions that I haven't found yet, because probably one, I was in my own echo chamber and two, I wasn't surrounding myself with people that were in the same industry or business, but they were all solution oriented as well, you know. Mm. So do you almost go to an event with the intention that this is historically I've gone to an event with the intention to learn, but I'm almost hearing that you're going to an event with the intention to buy. Hmm, good point. Well, I knew that going to the first event, I knew that there were some things I needed in my new role with this with this company that I'm working with now, right, to be able to help with some back end resources. I'm like, hey, if we can utilize this software and then stack what we need on top of it by doing very minimum custom work on top of it, it's going to get us there a lot faster. So my intention was I need a service provider that can solve this problem. That's where my mindset went. Right. Hmm. So going into that event, I was like, I knew I physically knew I, I knew no one that in the room. Never seen you before other than say like some videos and stuff, never met anyone. So I didn't have any expectations of, and probably no expectation of being in, being comfortable in a corner of the people I know as well. Right. So I could have either sat, just stood on the wall or really just been solution oriented because I'm not leaving my family and, and going out of town just to kind of figure things out and, and, and have fun. Right. That's just never been my MO. So yes, in the mm -hmm. sense of was I looking to buy, I was looking for a solution. Right. And the solution was there in the form of people and a, a program. And you knew even before you went there, it's like, yeah, the solution is in this room. I just don't know who has it. And then you're just it kind of working the room, mm -hmm. working the angles. Yeah, yeah I, I definitely was. get that. Dude, I mm -hmm. can't even take away with it. Like, you know, myself, because we're in, you know, just a little north of Toronto, essentially yeah. the, the majority of, of conferences and stuff, they're all in the States, not only in the States, they're in California. So, you know, like for me to go to that kind of meetup is a lot more, you know, it's two to $3,000 to show up for a couple of days. Right. So it's, yep. a, it's just a different kind of movement for me, but mm -hmm. the ones that I have gone to, uh, even like the first one I ever went to was that Billy Jean one where I think I met you the first time. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there, Dennis, you was kind of speaking. And the the funniest thing that kind of happened over the last couple of weeks for my business, and I definitely know the way that kind of Dennis, you does it, where he embeds the idea, he embeds the thing. And I feel like I don't even take action on it for kind of two, three years. But mm -hmm. like the content factory idea, where it's like using all of the different tools, where it's, you know, essentially making one long form piece of content, breaking it down to a bunch of shorter ones, figuring out how to turn those all into blog posts all that kind of stuff. Uh, basically, we've been going with that right now using all of the different tools and like the what we're seeing with it so far is still almost too early to look at numbers. But right now, I 100% I know this idea came from Dennis Yu, but somehow it, it sounded like I came up with it in my own head. We're putting out five blog posts a week. Uh, we're putting out two to three 
uh, recipe videos a week. And they're taking out like the first one we dropped had 22,000 views in the first couple of days. Blog uh, post or video? No. So that was the reel that connected to the blog post, you know, and then what we're doing is we're using the blog post as a way, one, it's an SEO play, but it's also a way that when we're trying to activate an email list, we're not only selling. We're like, hey, have you seen these other recipes we published this week? Then you check we it out value. and we give you opt-ins. It's only value because like I, I felt bad after a while because you've just seen all the unsubscribes, all of that kind of stuff. So it's like, how can we make it where these emails are good to open? And then that that blog idea. And then also recently, just all these tools have kind of fallen into place, like whether it's chat GTP or um, just kind of some of the editing stuff, some of the stuff on TikTok. But mm -hmm. like the, the content strategy is crazy right now. And it all goes back if I think about it, it all goes back to that first conference. So as much as in my head, if I'm trying to say, you know, like, oh man, going out to say like the go high level one in October, in my head, I know that's kind of two, three grand for 72 hours. But at the same time, if I'm still pulling off it as inspiration four years later, like what are we even talking about here?